Hello and welcome to all you Libras. This is your monthly horoscope for March of 2020. What's going on? Well, there is a huge uh, shift going on for all of us in general, which is called the Saturn going to another sign uh, shift. And that is in Aquarius, in a fellow air sign for you. And that is from the 23rd of March. It will stay in Aquarius, just the first couple of degrees of Aquarius up until the 3rd of July. And then it goes backwards to its position where it's now in, in your fourth house of Capricorn. I've been talking about that for a long, 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 long time. And then the end of the year, it will shift back into Aquarius. So we are all going to see in March, through the, the end of the March, a bit of a sneak preview of what this Saturn is all about in a new area of our lives. And Saturn is about the, the testing times and it's about uh, learning and it's about responsibility it's about less is more energy and um, and it's about responsibilities and in Aquarius Aquarius is the sign of innovation it's the sign of the alternatives and um, so for all of us it's like an op opportunity to structure um, the alternative to structure what is not mainstream to structure what is innovative now if we plot that into the horoscope of the general Libran it's in your fifth house that it's going to shift so there it is where you will feel the most this kind of hard-working energy what Saturn is all about Saturn is about less is more it's about quality but also um, responsibilities and hard work so what is the fifth house the fifth house is children and is connected to your love life and your your heart chakra so to speak now first of all we need to know that sat how Saturn in in Aquarius is it's a bit wicked it's a bit weird because of Saturn is structure and and Aquarius is like the the alternative but um, we also need to know if this is going to be a bit hard for us or not what it does with our energy and for you it's in a trine so Saturn um, in Capricorn is more difficult for a Libran than Saturn in Aquarius and that is good news right um, for some it's going to be a bit tougher and for some it's going to be easier and you're one of those peop uh, signs that it's going to be easier because it's in a fellow air sign, which is good. But nevertheless, it's still Saturn. So there's going to be, um, ha have a look at uh, and, and be aware of what's happening around the end of the month when it comes to those things like children and pro new projects, your creativity. Um, it's also how you enjoy yourself. Saturn wants to structure that which is a bit weird, right? Right. So on a very basic level, it could be that children demand a bit more of your discipline or children are giving you a bit more of a hard time. But again, there could be uh, coming up a bit of boundary issues or that they're trying to rebel, but you have to put some boundaries and, you know, that kind of topic between too many boundaries or too little. So, and that is the responsibility that you're having. Um, for others, it's their love life. It's, it's like they want a new approach, a more serious approach, a, a more mature approach uh, towards love life. So it's a lot, again, not about the ego, but about um, what is love really on a deep level. That's what Saturn wants. And, um, and that's interesting as well. So um, when you certainly had a love life, you dear Librans, where it was all over the place or there was no structure there or it was um, uh, too much giving and not receiving anything. This is, you know, you're not going to like this anymore with Saturn in your fifth house. You will, you will, you will feel that you want to put boundaries there. And that, that could be a good thing, but not so easy to do, especially when you are a Libran and Librans. They always want to get along and they always want, um, you know, this, this fairness going on. Um, but more about that energy uh, in the upcoming months, because this is energy that is going on for quite a long time. Now, Mercury also goes direct in that house, in that fifth house on the 11th. So things that 
that were a bit more stressful considering those items, you know, children, love life, uh, your creativity, there is now a momentum and things go forwards again. Also, when it comes to your day-to-day -day work, day-to-day -day life, there is some more ease going on. It's a good time to uh, be a bit more, uh, let's say, Mercury and Pisces in the sixth house. There is lots of more communication, understanding of your day-to-day -day routines and so on. So that's nice energy. And last but not least, there's also something happening in your emotional houses, which is a pretty good energy flow. And that is Venus and Mars, the, the, the love planets, are in Earth signs. So you're going to have Venus approximately the whole month, as from the 6th of March, um, actually, in your 8th house, uh, in its own sign. Venus in its own sign. It can really do good things. Uh, when it's in your 8th house, it can attract money of other people. It can attract, uh, for instance, uh, money that you get back from an old friend or whatever, or shared resources that are improving, or you're getting a loan, or an inheritance, or a tax return. Venus in the 8th house is a, is, is a financial house, um, but it's also intimacy. Um, so uh, it's also the house of sharing your intimate life with someone that is close to you. And it's trining um, Jupiter at the end of the month, throughout the end of the month, there's like a windfall there because it's shining Jupiter Pluto in your fourth house. Now, for some of you, this has to do with real estate, that there is something going on that uh, maybe you wanted to sell for such a long time and now eventually you're getting the money. Or there is like an inheritance happening and it has to do with real estate and now it's coming through because there's this Venus trining Jupiter Pluto connection in your fourth house, which is quite rare. Jupiter and Pluto together at the end of the month and the beginning of next month is a very rare connection. It's about transformation. So that if it's not to do with property or with housing or whatever, it has to do with your emotions. So there is like this very nice flow on an emotional level. If you had rough times emotionally, now is a better time because you are coming towards yourself. You are coming towards home, so to speak literally or figuratively um, so quite a transformation going on and i think it's the result of hard work over the years that you've been that i've been you know through the the monthly horoscopes explaining so much about pluto and saturn in your fourth house which is quite tough and now there you, you're seeing the rewards of that basically which is good and there is also at the end of the month on the 24th, a new moon in Aries, which is your uh, opposite, um, your, your um, partner house, so to speak. So for those of you who are single, there could be a new cycle starting here. There could be someone new coming in. For those of you who have an, a relationship, there could be a shift there happening, some sort of an ending that, you know, of course, it's a new beginning after that. So. Don't worry, this doesn't have to be too drastic of ending relationships. Although for some of you, if you say I had really more minuses than pluses in my relationship, this could mean the end of a relationship indeed. Um, but there's so much, when it comes to your emotions, you're pretty strong. And um, that's always a good sign, isn't it? So that's that. In ge this is general, of course, but I don't want to make those videos too long. I want them to be quite precise, concise, and I uh, hope it was helpful. Thank you so much for your time and for watching. And if you want a reading, just uh, get in touch. Bye-bye.